Hello, teachers, parents, and educational leaders, and welcome to this episode of Breaking Down the Best. Now, during this episode, you will get a peek into the members-only area where I have tons of resources to help you make math fun, make it click, and make it stick. There should be a link somewhere around this video where you can learn more. All right, now that we got that out of the way, let's get to it and let's break down the standard. Welcome to Breaking Down the Best, a video series dedicated to breaking down Florida's best standards for math. So grab something to write with and maybe even a snack. This looks good. And don't forget to put a smile on your face. There you go, I see you. And let's dive into today's best standard. Hello everybody and welcome. My name is Sarah McCarthy, the creator of McCarthy Math Academy. And I just wanted to thank you so much for taking time out of your nonstop busy schedule to join me as we break down today's best standard, okay? In this video series, we will be using resources that the Florida Department of Education provides to break down these standards. So basically, I'm just showing you, I'm walking you through how I analyze and break down the standards when I prep for the content that is on the website at taking or at McCarthy Math Academy, but it's for the program taking on the best. Okay, so let's go ahead and today's standard is We've got MA.4.NSO.1.1. MA stands for math, 4 stands for fourth grade, NSO stands for number sense operations. That's our strand that we're working in. And the benchmark is 1.1. So the standard says to express, which means that we need our students to be able to show, to explain how the value of a digit, and by the way, a digit is a single number, zero through nine. And the way that I teach students is um, like, just like words have letters, right? A word is made up of letters. A number is made up of digits. And the thing is, is that those digits are in different places and their value changes, which is what this whole standard is about. It's to express how the value of a digit in a multi-digit whole number changes if the digit moves from one placed left or right. I think I just said placed. One place left or right. Um, I pointed out right here that the right, going to the right on the place value chart is new. Coming from those common core standards that we used in Florida, the old standards called for students to identify the values when it was shifted ten, to be 10 times more, but now we're going left and right. So that means our digits will be 10 times more or 10 times less. Um, be careful here because I have seen some other resources floating out there where um, they're talking about it being 10 or 100 times more. But you can see here, we're only going one place. So it should be only 10 times more or 10 times less. Um, these are living documents. What I'm pointing out, the, the Department of Education in Florida, they're constantly uploading these. I do want to give them some props because I think that they really do a fabulous job of, of giving us as much information as they can here. Okay, so what are some other standards that are related in fourth grade? Well, we have this one right here, MA.4.NSO.2.5, and that benchmark, that standard, is where we are multiplying and dividing using estimation. Okay, some terms that you need to know. Well, they just said one term. I believe that there are more terms, but here, just whole numbers, one, two, three. I believe that students need to know um, what a digit is, you know, and um, what value is and what the different place names are. So there are more keywords that they need to pay attention to, but they're pointing out in this document, they're pointing out that whole numbers are going to be important. Um, all right, so where are they coming from in third grade? They're coming from ma.3.nso.2.3, and that's where we're multiplying one digit times multiples of 10 or 100, just showing how the value can increase when we have one digit or more multiplying it by 10. All right, and then in fifth grade where they're going is how does the value change with decimal numbers one or more places 
to the left or to the right. So in the fifth grade standard, they'll have to go multiple places, maybe 10 times greater, maybe 100 times greater, maybe 1,000 times greater, one or more, and then going the other way, 10 times less, 100 times less, 1,000 times less. That's what fifth grade is going to call for. So right now our mission is just to have students understand and master moving left or right just one place, which would be 10 times greater or less. Okay, so let's see what jumps out in this purpose and instructional strategies section. Um, all right, so this standard, in third grade, they went up to the 10,000s place, sort of, but we mostly stayed in the ones, tens, hundreds, thousands place. When we have now added in these two places, our numbers are getting really big. And for students, that can be a little bit overwhelming. So a lot of times what I'm seeing in curriculum scopes and sequences is that we, we really fly through this section and place value is huge and the understanding is huge. So what I would suggest is definitely starting with the ones place and showing how if we place the digit, let's say, let me get a pen, hang on. If I placed the digit three in the ones place, and I have a di the same digit three in the tens place, the digit three in the ones place is only has a value of three, but the digit three in the tens place has a value of 30, and three times 10 equals 30. So starting with the smaller units where it makes sense and having them see the patterns, that way when they get up to the 10 thousands place and the 100 thousands place, they can already see the pattern and they're just applying a pattern from something that they feel pretty confident with to these big hairy scary numbers, all right? They're not hairy scary, but at first it's like Bleh! for them. Not for all of them, but that's my experience with fourth graders. Um, okay, so they students need to understand that when we move to the left, we go 10 times greater, which means our value increases. That's the big takeaway here. And the opposite, when we move one hop to the right, one jump, one place to the right, our value is decreasing by 10. So that could be represented as divided by 10 or like this one tenth of or or one tenth of using a multiplication sign so both of those concepts all of which we break down in taking on the best i'll show you that in a second too i would definitely have a chart like this in the classroom posted so students can always see and refer to it maybe even on their desks if you do it like that um, i do see that here they're saying that we're moving to the right but we also need to remember that we're moving to the left as well. That's the difference between the old Common Core standard and this new one. Okay, so like we just here, I've seen a lot of sample questions that just talk about when we're moving to the left, that it's increased. Students get confused by that and that when they're moving to the right, that it's decreased which is the same thing as dividing by 10. I just pointed that out there. And I just made a note, I've already talked about this, but this is a challenging skill. I know it seems like the basics of place value, but this is a challenging skill, especially this year as I'm creating this video, this is the transitional year from the Common Core standards to the best standards. And there's a lot expected of them in the best standards, which I think is great, but just know that we need more time than just one lesson for students to lock this in, okay? Um, and there's some instructional task items there that you can kind of see the sample of what they are, what the, the benchmark is trying to get at, okay? So now that we've gone over, was there anything I wanted to say there? I'm going to put M, M, M here because with access to the silver membership, you will have access to a problem that looks like this with the math misconception mystery. So just kind of do like a mental picture, and we'll, I'll show you how we're gonna go over that in a fun way. Something similar to that problem that they gave us. Okay. <clears throat> All right, members, let's go over what you have access to. So we're gonna go to members enter here. Taking on the best fourth grade. And we are in NSO, the very first standard. 
NSO.1.1. And you know what? No matter what membership you have, for this one, everybody has access to the gold. You have access to all of the gold resources, which includes everything that I'm about to go over. So that's kind of cool for this one. So for the bronze resources, you have access to the video lessons and the printable worksheets. You can see here, it says foundational skills with place value. I know probably as well as a lot of you do that this is kind of usually one of the first ones that we tackle when we get back. I know some counties are changing up their pacing guides, but um, a lot of times, even when you're just jumping into place value for the first time, students need to understand their places and the value of digits. So this lesson specifically targets the background information that they need to know to be successful moving on. So definitely take that. I know it looks... It looks kind of basic, but we go over a lot. We talk about what digits are in this lesson. We talk about the different names for the periods. We talk about all the names of the places, what that comma does. And then down here with the value of digits, we start to introduce how this seven right here is in the ones place, which has a value of seven. This seven right here has a value of 70. And look, it's 10 times more when it's in the tens place. You can see we're gradually stepping them up with that lesson right there, okay? Then we have 10 times greater and 10 times less. So one video dedicated to greater, one video dedicated to less, and you have the printable guides that go with it. So here, write this number in the place value chart. And then we mention, you can see here, 10 times less written in words, one tenth of, so introducing that, saying that they mean the same thing. And then down here, you can see um, we may have used one tenth of and then 10 times less. So just kind of going back and forth and gradually releasing them with the content. That is the bronze. Now, everybody has access to the silver for this particular standard because I want you to be able to see what you get if you were to choose to upgrade your memberships at any point. You can always go back to your bronze resources here, but for the silver, you have access to a bunch more printables. <laughs> um, here's the video lesson. So if you see this icon right here, you know that is a video lesson that you'll find in the bronze resources. This is a video lesson, the 10 times greater that we just saw. And then after that, you get extra practice. That's the difference between the bronze and the silver is that the, the silver gives you some extra practice there. So with this, students can work independently, whether it's in a center or for homework, however you wanna end up doing it. If you have support staff at your school that they can work with students, you can have these ready for you to go, okay? 10 times less, that's a video lesson. And then there's one extra practice page and two extra practice pages. Okay, and you can see here it's a little bit different. Here's the number 19,203. Write a number where the digit two is 10 times greater than the digit two in 19,203. These types of problems are actually super wordy, but once students start to have practice with them, it clicks. They start to see the patterns of what's happening and it makes sense. And that's what this is all about is that practice. It builds that confidence muscle and that's what we're trying to do, right? Okay. Oh, these were 10 times greater or less. So having to switch back and forth between the two, super. And um, here for math missions, this is the math task for the standard. So every standard in the silver membership, if you have that membership, it has a math mission and that's a math task. It kind of takes the whole standard and throws it into a more challenging situation where students have to think critically through it. So you can see here, it says Anthony receives a step tracker for his birthday. In July, he realizes that he's logged this many steps. Um, and then he's trying to set a new goal that meets the, the situation. So it's throwing them into a problem that would be a real world situation, okay? And then here's a, do you agree with Jasmine? And then I absolutely love creating these math misconception mystery episodes. Basically what they are, the, the video is on the page too, on the silver page, but um, students will solve this problem on their own. And then they'll watch four characters, which are really just me dressed up. Three of those characters will make a mistake that students tend to make. And one student, or one character, I'm sorry, will have the most reasonable answer. And so student, this is great for group discussions, for 
math discourse or an analyzing all these errors happening, figuring out what somebody did correctly, what advice they might give them for next time. It is awesome and it's so much fun. The smiles on their faces working through this. And this is some challenging stuff here too, okay? And you can see, I remember what we wrote down in the standard um, from the FLDOE that this, they gave us a problem that was kind of similar to this and um, it's fun. So take a look at that since you all have access to that. This is the episode right here. Just press play. You can always full screen it right there. All right. And okay. Then for the gold resources, which everybody also has access to, you can go here. You can go back to your bronze, back to your silver at any time. For the gold resources, you do have access to a mini assessment. I'll just kind of show you here. I'm sure that you have assessments that you use within your district, but this can just be something extra for you to, to gauge their learning before the actual test. And there's the answer key. Um, this is the breaking down the best video. You're watching that right now. So eventually by the time you see this, there should be a video right there. And, um, but uh, McCarthy, Ma I can't talk. <laughs> McCarthy Math 155 was the program I created when we had the Common Core Standards in Florida. Uh, and every, after studying the same documents that we study in these Breaking Down the Best videos, I was like, no, y'all need a whole new program. So that's what I did. But you have access when you have the, if members with the gold membership have access to all of these extra video lessons with McCarthy Math 155. Um, they do not align specifically with the best standards, but there is a lot that trickles over. So you have access to a lot more practice if you need it. All right. Before you go, just let me remind you that what you're doing every day with your life, it really matters. I know that there is a lot going on in education and that this profession can be super exhausting, super stressful, but it's worth it because our students are the future and we have to believe that we're making a difference. We might not know how our time spent with our students is truly going to impact them, but we have to believe that what we are doing day in and day out, it's helping to shape them into the people that they were born to be and helping them to step into their greatness. Thank you for joining me on this episode of Breaking Down the Best and I'll see you real soon. Okay, so I know that I just said goodbye for now, but I'm gonna ask you to do one more thing, okay? If you enjoyed this episode, please consider sharing it with your teacher friends or other leaders in education. That's how I get to continue doing what I love to do, which of course is supporting you all to the best of my ability. All right, for real now, bye.